Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to this fast fact video about the Clinimax Prodigy Tumor Reactive T-Cell Process. My name is Saskia Rösch, I'm Global Product Manager for Tier Therapy Solutions and today I'm joined by my colleague Arina Jabinska. She's Team Coordinator in our R&D department and responsible for the development of this nice process. So thank you Arina for joining today. Thank you, Saskia. It's a pleasure to be talking about our developments today. Before we start with the actual process, I'd like to highlight briefly our Clinimax Prodigy platform. This platform is already used in more than 180 clinical trials worldwide in more than 45 countries. And this technology is used by a lot of different drug developers. And there are more than 300 customized applications already developed. Yeah, what does this uh, platform include? It's a hands-off end-to-end processing platform to manufacture cell and gene therapies. And it includes, of course, the instrument that is also depicted here. Um, it includes closed tubing sets as well as other consumables. Um, our Max GMP reagent portfolio, as well as the Clinimax Prodigy software. These are standard processes that come with the instrument. And one of those processes is the process we talk about today, the Clinimax Prodigy Tumor Reactive T-Cell Process. Yeah, why did we develop such a process? So as you know, cell therapy is quite an old approach. But due to um, yeah, the tedious and time-consuming protocols that include a lot of manual handling steps, so far there's no commercialized product on the market. And this is why we developed this process for an automated GMP-compliant manufacturing of tail therapies. And um, yeah, Irina, you are the person who developed uh, this uh, process. So you are the best person to talk to, to give us a short intro into this process and what's possible. Thank you, Saskia. Right, so as we know, conventional tool production starts with tail outgrowth, which is around two weeks where tools outgrow from the tumor fragments. Then there is an option selection step, followed by a rapid expansion protocol in which activated T cells are cultivated in the presence of high doses R2, anti CD3 antibody, and irradiated feeder cells. That's what we used as a background for our process, and here you can see what we developed. So, alternatively to the tail outgrowth, we actually directly select the uh, specific T cells from the tumor digest. In the beginning of the process, the tumor digest is placed into the prodigy chamber, and the T cells are specifically stimulated. So these T cells are present within the tumor digest as well as the tumor cells, which serve as a specific signal. So in the result of this simulation, which is usually overnight, the CD137 is getting upregulated, and this uh, CD137 can be used as a marker for this treatment enrichment step. Then the positive fraction is serving as a starting material for the subsequent expansion, and here you can see we start with the prep, where we do the activation, the feeder addition, and then later the whole cultivation. There is also an optional viral transduction step. And finally, after the end of the prep, we can finally formulate the cells in the desired the final formulation solution, and then they are coming to the target cell back, which can be sealed off and taken to the patient. Okay, great. So it really seems that you thought about everything and included um, every option. So I would be basically interested in the expansion step. So to my knowledge, a lot of uh, people in the field, they do this um, rapid expansion protocols using bike tools or expanding bike tools. Is this also possible with this process? Right. Um, of course, the expansion is the basis of our process. And you can start from the middle. Let me just show you how the data looks like. Okay, so as you can see on the picture, you can actually start from the beginning of the expansion. This is possible with um, a special case of our process, and it is um, offering us um, different default scenarios for the cultivation. So you have different protocols which the operator can select and then either use them as they are or modify them. There are multiple parameters which can be adjusted. For example, one can adjust the feeding schedule, the chamber checking regimens, the medium exchanges, the cell washing, and so on. And of course, if the transduction is desired, then the transduction parameters as well. So importantly, it is possible to take samples within the culture. 
maintaining the cost um, integrity of the system. And then using the data from the analysis of those samples, one can find uh, the cell culture protocol in real time. So far, we tried different hemotypes. As you can see here, we tried infantile tails from melanoma, from pancreatic adenocarcinoma, and renal cell carcinoma, and everything worked well with good viability and nice expansion rates. So we have also compared tail expansion in the small scale and on the prodigy with the same operators and the same donor sets. And what you can see here is that we always keep having high viability, which is nice. So it's the same for the small scale and the prodigy, and we actually get high expansion rates on the prodigy compared to the small scale expansion. Okay, this looks really nice. So um, I understand that you can do an automated rapid expansion protocol on the Clinimax Prodigy. Um, but if I take a look at the cell numbers you mentioned, um, yeah, the billion cell might be a bit too low. Is there any option to increase um, the expansion rates? Well, thanks for the question. This is actually our current agenda. Indeed, we are developing a, um, a large scale process in which deals will be cultured in a larger chamber. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we will be able to get tens of billions of cells. Okay, and what if this is still not sufficient for my process, for my development of cell therapies, of till therapy? Yeah, well, then one can actually potentially split the product for two devices, for example. But one can also discuss further options with our customized application teams, who can offer different options, and one of them would be combining prodigy with a GRX reactor. Okay, great. So there's a lot of opportunities to yeah, adapt somehow the process that I am in the I division. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, at the beginning you mentioned the antigen specific stimulation followed by an um, enrichment using C137. And um, yeah, I would be interested in the advantages of this approach. Yeah, well, we know that an average tail product consists of tens of billions of cells, which is a huge mass. So to produce this mass, it should not only cost multiple weeks, but is also associated with multiple transfers between different vessels and different devices. So we thought of this and also of the fact that actually only a small fraction of those cells in the final bulk product are really cancer specific. So to our mind, actually, Using the selected CD137 positive cells would have several advantages. One of them would be the reduced vein to vein time, which is uh, the result of our shortened process. Secondly, one would not need any selection step in between because this action has already been done in the very beginning of the process. And finally, we only express, um, sorry, we only expand the most potent cells, so no bystander cells. And therefore, we would also need less cells for the infusion, possibly less stressful for the patient. And actually, it's also uh, more cost effective because the reduced uh, medium and reagent consumption. Yeah, got it. So, yeah, the, exp the expansion of CD137 <coughs> positive cells has a lot of advantages. Um, so, you said that uh, these reactive cells are just a small fraction of the whole bulk tools. Do you have any data on yeah, how this expansion? of the CD137 positive cells is in comparison to um, to the bulk cells and also if the CD137 cells are really um, reactive, tumor reactive in the end. Good question, yes. So we actually provide some examples of the expansion in the following slide. Here you can see the both which we got from the melanoma tumor digest. We selected them for CD137 and the positive fraction was expanded. So you see we always get something in the billion range. And personally, to me, it's very nice to see that we could also expand uh, from such low cell numbers as um, then in the range of, to the bulk four. And we still get several billion, so it's sometimes thousands, sometimes tens, or even yeah, tens of thousands of times for the expansion. We have high viability, and back to your question about the reactivity, after the harvest, we incubated those um, tills with the autologous tumor cells, and we could see interferon gamma production shown here in the negative controls or where tills were incubated with our genetic cell line, there was no reactivity. And interestingly, we also took the fraction which was landing in the negative cell bag, so the cells which were not expressed in CD137. And for this experiment, we actually expanded them in parallel, and you see there's often no reactivity. So to me, it might be a sign that they shouldn't be taken into expansion. 
Yeah, okay. So I really like the CD137 uh, approach, also the advantages you mentioned that comes along with the selection of CD137 positive cells. But you might be best, might know better than me that there are also a lot of groups, a lot of researchers and investigators that are also interested in other markers like PD1 or CD103 or CD69 or something. Um, do we also have an option to include this instead or on top of CD137? Is there something that the process can do? Yeah, well, good option. Yes, we are aware of other markers, of course. For now, our process is validated to CD137. This is also the strategy that we see. We have a lot of customers or people who would like to use different markers or maybe the combination of different markers. I would actually suggest using probably um, sorting or now tighter sorter, which allows uh, sorting in a closed system in a GMP manner. We also have, I think we also have multiple reagents for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so to summarize, um, the Clinimax Prodigy tumor reactive T cell process enables for the automated manufacturing of tumor reactive T cells for transtherapy. It's an automated, modular, and they were flexible process to meet the individual needs. So different study materials, uh, viable stimulation ways with peptides, with tumor digest. Also the possibility to perform expansion only or do an additional uh, genetic modification by viral transduction. Um, for processing of tumor tissue, we have also a special gentle max uh, C tubes and GMP compliant tumor dissociation uh, kits under development that will be available soon. Um, Miltini Biotech, of course, also provides all the GMP reagents and consumables that are needed for the TRT process. And um, if you need another um, degree of flexibility, we uh, also recommend our customized application service. And for the TRT um, process, there's also a hands-on training in the university available. If you're now interested in learning more about this process, you can get in contact with us. So just scroll down the website and use the contact us, the form, um, insert your, your personal um, details, and we will get back to you and discuss the options. And with this, we are at the end of our presentation. We thank you for your attention, and I thank you, Lina, for joining today. Goodbye.